Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about the real Facebook whistleblower. Alright, and here's what I mean by the real one. So we had a lady come out, and I don't remember her name, and I'm pretty sure I looked it up. Let me see if I did. I looked it up for the to try and show you guys something else. Let's see, what's her name? Pew pew, this one, her. Okay, so we had her, she came out and was telling people all about things Facebook does. But at the same time, this gentleman, and his name is Sean Spiegel, came out and started, had this interview with Patrick Bet David about how Facebook runs and manages anything that they consider bad, right? So it depends on what country you're in. It depends on, you know, whether or not they think it would look bad for them. You guys need to watch this video. I, I don't want to play it just because, it, as you can see, it's an hour and 15 minutes long. If I were to sit here and comment on it, it would probably be at least a two hour thing because I think everything he says is important. Two things I want to just hit on on his video is one, there are people reviewing everything that's on Facebook that is considered objectionable. Whatever he talks about, there's different, um, like there's different layers to it or there's different tiers or whatever. There is a person that looks at it. Now, we know that out in this world there's evil things going on. There's people abusing their children, abusing animals, you know, doing all kinds of things, abusing each other, um, <clears throat> doing all kinds of things that are just evil, nasty things. And these people are on Facebook, just like you or me, who just want to show people like, look at this cute cat, or look at this thing I went and saw today. They are creating all kinds of nasty things and selling it to all kinds of other nasty people who want these things. So I think, you know, one of the things that we should probably do is think about a gentleman like this and all the other people who work at Facebook who have to look at this stuff. He said that his schedule was like 10 hours. So 10 hours of nothing but looking at some of the most awful things you can see people do. Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I would not want that job. And I think we should pray for them. I mean, I don't know anything about him other than he used to work at Facebook and now he's telling telling us what Facebook let slide as far as the nasty stuff, what Facebook just didn't report because it might look bad for them, what Facebook, you know, did and did not do. It's not just Facebook looking at it. It's another company as well, which he'll get into. We need to pray for these people. We need to pray for their their mental health and their ability to come away from all of that. Something else I thought about, something my brother and I talked about actually. If you work for YouTube... Facebook is as big as it is. YouTube's like 100 times bigger. It has 100 times more of this nasty stuff, right? And uh, there are people reviewing that. I mean, I just think even if you only do it today, just say a little prayer for those people, okay? They're, that's not an easy job. That's not a good job. It's probably not a job any of us would want because none of us want to look at that. <laughs> we want to stamp it out as soon as we see it, usually. So this, this thing, I, I initially started this video, um, just wanting to show you, Hey, look, the ma mainstream media has got a whistleblower that isn't a whistleblower. Why would they do that? Because here's a real one. Here's someone telling you what's really going on in there, how the structure really works, what they'll, what they really report on and what they don't, right? what they really care about and what they know. Uh, Facebook is a business and like any business that is not run in a moral way, they don't care if people are getting hurt or they don't care if people are, 
just anything, anything negative that you can think of. They don't really care about it unless it's going to make them look good in the end. All right. He, towards the middle, I believe his name's Sean. I'm sorry. I'm terrible with names. It doesn't even matter. I don't even remember my own name sometimes. Yes, Sean. Shares how the only way any of these people who make these private places and all this stuff to do this nasty stuff that they do, um, <clears throat> The only way those people got any kind of reporting or anything was because a video goes viral. There's so many things to think about here. You know, social media can be a good tool, but also it can be just a tool to, 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 to put just evil out there. To even encourage people to do evil. I was thinking about this while I was listening to him. It's like, no wonder some people, I mean, we don't know who works for Facebook. We don't know who used to work for Facebook and is now out there in the world, right? But if you worked for Facebook or YouTube or any of these places that host video, then, you know, you've been, and, and you moderate, you've been exposed to this stuff. And that's going to affect how you want to see the world. And if you think you have the ability to change it, even if it's wrong, even if it's, you know, not right, I think that they would try. So you gotta think about this. Social media, like I said, can be fine. It can be a good a way to have a lot of fun, but it can also be a way to just disseminate evil constantly. And I think it would not be as bad if people were more invested in fighting evil and less invested in you know, monitoring whether or not somebody loves the American Constitution. Because you have those people too. Um, just some of the things he says. This is what, I, I agree that this is what should be on the mainstream media. And like I said, initially this video was supposed to be about, well, the mainstream media has one. Why are they propping this person up and talking about it and talking about it? Well, because this guy has come out the same day, pretty much. The same day. October 4th, 2021 is when this went um, out. And if you look at when the whistleblower for Facebook that everybody is talking about came out, October 3rd. Okay. Oh, this was updated on October 4th. So they were trying to get a little bit ahead of the game. So you'll look at her and say, oh, okay, Facebook whistleblower. And then later on, you know, it turns out she's not who she really says she is. She doesn't, all she wants is to give Facebook more power, which is not what should happen. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know. So the day before this guy comes out telling you all about everything that's going on on Facebook, everything that he had to look at, everything that they didn't report on, all the nasty stuff that goes on behind the scenes, how it's not just Facebook and it's not just AI, it's an actual other company uh, that Facebook uses to go through their stuff. So there's even more people, you know, getting exposed to this and stuff. How people were using Facebook as like, Facebook just basically became the drug, sex, and rock and roll of this age <laughs> over at Facebook. Uh, and uh, it's just awful. It's just awful. It makes me just want to cry. <laughs> I just, just, if you have kids, don't watch this around your kids. But you should watch it because here's the thing. All this nasty stuff doesn't stay in these private things. Okay, it doesn't. All this nasty stuff doesn't not affect your kids because some of this nasty stuff is how is instructions on how to get to your kids, how to get someone who is or is not. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I thought I was having some trouble with my mic, but it looks like it's all good. So uh, basically what I'm saying here is like this evil stuff doesn't just stay where it's at. Companies should act with morality, even if it's just the sort of secular morality. We all understand that, you know, you shouldn't use your kids as sex objects. You shouldn't do this, that, or the other, right? 
you shouldn't, you know, bestiality is bad for lots of good reasons. Um, there are truths out here that are true no matter what you believe in. If it's not, if it's not a god or whatever, there are things that are just absolutely true. And, you know, this is kind of scary because it's not, you know, it's not going to stay just there. Uh, and when companies don't act in a moral way and they just say, well, this could make us look bad, so we're going to toss it away. And don't understand that for the average person, whenever you help the police put away like a pedophile ring or something like that, that actually makes you look good. It makes me wonder what kind of people are running this, you know? I just, you got to be careful out there, guys. You got to be careful. Be careful with yourself, with your family. Keep them close. Correct them when they're doing stuff that they shouldn't. You know what I mean? Just whatever you can do to help them stay away from this. Pray for these people, guys. They need prayer. Prayer is, for God's people, prayer matters. Prayer is a changing, sweeping force in the world. And uh, we need to do that. I don't understand how, you know, I just, listening to stuff like this just makes me sad, mad, and then makes me want to go, well, I guess everybody was right. We just can't have nice things because of these other people. And it's just, if we bow and lose something every time evil uses it, we'll, we will lose everything. Because evil does, will, and will continue to use everything that is out here. Everything that's nice and good and beautiful and use it for evil. So I don't think we can just say, well, that's got to go now. That's got to go now. That's got to go now. And just start tossing stuff out. I think we have to say that whoever's involved with it needs to be moral. And if they're not going to be, then they lose it. Or if they're not going to be, then they go to jail. You see what I'm saying? Like... The people that that he talks about in, in Facebook who said, no, nah, we're just not going to do that because it could look make us look bad. According to the law, they're accomplices now because they knew something was happening and they did nothing about it. Why he didn't do anything about it, I don't know. Why he didn't just call the FBI, I don't know. You know, he's kind of an accomplice too. <laughs> like, if you know something is happening where somebody is getting hurt somebody is going to continue to hurt people you you have to say something evil doesn't stop unless it is stopped you understand like that is a concept inside christianity as well you have to stand up to evil the bible says that if you resist the devil he will flee the devil being the representation of, you know, all evil. He instigates evil. He wants things dead and, and all this. You have to resist evil and then it will flee. But if you don't, if you don't stand up and you don't do anything and you don't make any phone call and you don't tell anybody and you and that person go make the phone call or whatever it is, it'll just continue and snowball. <clears throat> I'd like to see more people resist evil and stand up so that's all i really got to say now guys uh read your bible and pray pray for these people because you think about it like i think i said earlier youtube is 10 times if not 100 times bigger and there's just as many people looking at this kind of stuff on a daily basis you know just pray for them you guys read your bible i'm gonna close i guess read your bible and pray keep your loved ones close and uh, stand up to evil everywhere you can, anywhere you can, however you can. All right. Bye. See you in the next one.